Hello and thank you for watching my video. This time we are going to talk about an EV conversion of a sailboat engine. Behind me you see a Volvo Penta MB250 sailboat engine. This engine uh, has caused a lot of problems. It's, it's a rather old engine. This is the second one I, that I have and the other one is still in the boat. So I have starting problems with it and I started to look around in the internet if anyone, has el anyone else has the same problems and have maybe a solution. So I came across a Finnish guy and you see the link down below here. He did an EV conversion on this particular motor so this is nothing really new but uh, I would like to show how I did it and to do that you of course need a few parts. First of all, you need the engine, of course, and the big advantage, in my opinion, is that you can use this lower part here. So, the lower part of the engine is this housing here, that's the oil sump. Then this is a cover for the gear change, forward reverse gear and idle. And this housing also holds the brackets that go into the hull of the ship. So you don't need to change anything on the ship's hull and that's in my opinion a big advantage compared to other conversions where you have to modify the hull as well. And we need to do uh, a few things here. So first of all when you separate the engine block from this tail here you need to unscrew five screws. These are the ones here and they are attached to the engine block from, from the button here, from the underside. And once you have unscrewed those, you can also, you need to remove this cover here for the gear switch or gear change. And the gear change uh, is attached to a lever and you re need to remove this lever here and also the, the rod that is going down to the gearbox. Once you have that removed, you can start separating uh, this tail, the upper part here. There are four screws bolted to this housing here. And then you can remove the, this part here and you get access to two more screws that come out here and are attached to the engine block. <clears throat> so once you have done that, you can separate those two things and you only need these parts here. Plus, one of the important things is, this is the adapter coupling from the engine block or the engine crankshaft to the drive shaft down here. And this part is really essential because if you don't have that, you either need to manufacture it yourself. I couldn't find it somewhere. And uh, I separated it by, there is a, they are pressed together and welded together. So I removed the weld here and we are going to separate those two. What else do you need? Uh, my intention is to attach a plate to this part here. And by attaching the plate or on top of the plate, we will use those spacers here. There are four of them. They will go around here like that. And of top, on top of those, we will use the motor. So this is the electrical motor that I'm going to use. That's the same one as the Finnish guy is using. It's a three kilowatt motor from Golden Motor. And it's a three phase AC motor. To control this motor, you need a motor controller from the same manufacturer. And that is this here. So it has uh, a number of in or outputs. So these are the high power sections. You have uh, the DC supply, 48 volts from the batteries, and the three phases that go into the motor. Then additionally, you have a number of controls here, like uh, throttle, forward, reverse, and, and different speed ratings and things like that. So the motor will run about up to four or five thousand RPMs and that's about the same that the 
fuel based motor is going to do so it's really an optimal choice in my opinion then this three kilowatts uh, is con controlled by that controller here it's called easy control or easy control and you have a, a phone application that you can connect to bluetooth via this here and you can everything adjust on the phone then the three kilowatts you have an efficiency of maybe 85 percent that means 15 percent are turned into heat in this controller here and that means you need to cool down about 300 watts and these 300 watts uh, i have an old heat sink here that i'm going to use to, con uh, to cool this controller down so these are the parts that you mainly use of course we need to have the battery cables and switches like that we'll put that together later on so we are here on the 3d cat model what you see is the golden motor that uh, three kilowatt motor you see the outputs of the of the wires here those four and uh, a bit of cooling there's a fan on the inside here and then the actual motor is on this big part here uh, on this side you have the output of the of the motor shaft you see a little keyway and furthermore also those four support holes that we are going to use to attach the spacers to it the spacers that i have in mind look like this here and there are four of them I will attach them so you see how the idea looks like and the, the attachment of the spacer to the motor will be through those holes the, the big ones at the outer edge and that will hold the motor in in the same height so it's very important that these are totally equal in length and I need to make sure when I mill them that they are really equal height. So the motor sits totally horizontal on the support plate. Then we need to adapt this shaft here to the drive shaft of the propeller. We need a number of couplings actually. The first coupling is this L70 coupling. That's a flexible coupling here with uh, rubber uh, in it. And coupling is is held on the shaft by these grub screws they attach to the shaft or to the coupling and hold also the keyway in position on this side there is a 10 millimeter hole also as, as the other which we need the shaft adapter to come in and the shaft adapter will be held with the same grub screw and, and or identical part on this side here of the coupling. So that's the shaft adapter. You see that hole here is, is designed to press the adapter, the original adapter that we have that goes between the, the fuel motor and the drive shaft uh, goes in here and we, we will seam weld around this circumference these two parts together so the the drive shaft adapter and this coupling adapter is is is, is uh, not to separate again and the only adapter that we really have for the coupling that we have is, is this here this is a bit flexible so everything on on this here is then attached to the support plate this is the support plate you see already here is let me see if I can show that a bit better there is a difference in height so these four screws or eight screws go into the spacers and this part here is milled out to make space for the cover plate of the gear switch that is slightly higher than the engine block and these, this part here is really attached to the engine block then. So we have a number of holes. These at the outer part here or outer area. These are screwed from the top, uh, from the bottom of the, of the machine housing or the tail housing. And 
here we will have studs to attach the cover of the gear switch uh, mechanism and going through here and we will put screws or just bolts in here to localize or uh, fix the this display here I think it's not necessary to really screw them in but we will we will make sure that this doesn't move anything so this is how it's going to look like the next step will be to machine all these parts and yeah after that we will look into the electrical section thank you for watching